This is my jam. Yum. I'm like really into this. Mmm. Ooh, that's good. Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme of this week's episode is sick foods. It doesn't really roll off the tongue, and I did actually try to come up with a better turn of phrase for it, but what I mean by it is foods that you eat when you're sick. And just like in my comfort foods video, I asked you all to be a part of this one. So again, it's not just going to be me, it's going to be me and five of you. Well, six, because for the first video, there are two people. It's Brett and Abby, and they're gonna talk to us about a dish from Japan. <laughs> okay. Hi, Hi Beryl. Beryl. I'm Abby. I'm Brett. And this is Ochizuke. So when I was younger, my grandmother, who was from Japan, would make this for me all the time when I wasn't feeling good or if it was just cold or whatever outside. But now, I make this. He makes it for me. Let's be honest. For her. He makes it for me. It's a pretty common dish. A lot of people eat it whenever they're not feeling well because it's the cross between a rice dish and a soup. So you've got a bed of steamed rice and then on top you put some rice seasoning or some furukake. And then on top of that, uh, a very common protein would be salmon, which is our favorite. But you don't always have to have a protein. Mm -hmm. And then you finish the whole thing off with some green tea. It's definitely a little weird if you're not used to the concept, but it's delicious. <laughs> So you get the salty from your seasoning and your fish and the seaweed in it. Uh, but then you also get some kind of herbal floral notes from your green tea. Like any soup, it's warm and it's easy to eat. Mm. And it's like a hug in a bowl. It is a hug in a bowl. Yeah. It is. Okay, so we are starting off with Japanese ochazuke that Abby and Brett sent in. It looks pretty interesting. Oh my god. <laughs> Yum, that's so good. So I did feel a little bit like maybe I was cheating because it was an instant pack, but that's what they did. If you buy it from the store, like we do, it looks like this. This is the brand we like. Instant pack. <laughs> wow. The flavors of this are so nice. The green tea is interesting as a soup base. If I was sick and I got this, I would feel pretty good. They served theirs with salmon. I didn't have any salmon. I had some shrimp, so, you know. Having some shrimp with that, oh, it's good. I was not expecting it to taste like this. I don't really know what I was expecting this to taste like. The green tea flavor is subtle, but it's definitely there. I think that it does help give a cohesiveness to the dish, helps it not be too salty. I can see how when you're sick, this would be so nice. That was a good start. <laughs> it's funny that I'm gonna be eating all of these foods for when you're sick, when I'm feeling tip top, knock on wood. Hello everyone, my name is Shivani Purohit and I am from New Delhi in India. Today I'm here to talk about a common food which is eaten by most people in my country when they are not feeling well. It is called Khichdi. Khichdi is a homogenous mixture like a porridge and it is made with yellow moong dal or lentils, rice, water and sometimes with vegetables. There are many variations of Khichdi across the country but as a food for the sick, it is generally eaten in the northern states. It is a mildly spicy, warm and healthy dish. Spices like turmeric, cumin and ginger may be added which gives it a healing benefit. I like my khichdi with a big dollop of ghee and according to me, it's a complete meal. It is such a versatile dish and every family has a recipe of their own. There is so much of diversity, yet every person has had khichdi in some form or another. It is really simple to make, the ingredients are really easy to find and also really cheap. In my family, we have khichdi almost every week and my mother makes it with cumin, cloves and lots of love. So this is, interestingly enough, the dish that spawned the idea for this whole episode. Mmm! Oh wait, this is really good! 
it's interesting because when I'm trying all of these dishes, I do not have an association of being sick with them. When I was talking to my husband about it, he said growing up, he never wanted to eat this at any other time because he would be like, I'm not sick. This is, this is food for when you're sick. Why are you giving me this? Which makes sense. I really like this. It is very soft and very mild. I think in general, sick food, comfort food, they do go hand in hand. Yum. I'm like really into this. You could definitely add more to this. In fact, Shivani was saying that you can top this with vegetables, you know, more ghee if you want. You can kind of dress this up so it could go super basic or, you know, a little bit fancier. I want as basic as you could get. I totally get how this would be good if you have an upset stomach. You don't want anything too aggressive and this is very simple, but as someone who doesn't have an upset stomach and who is eating this because they're hungry, I can also confirm that this just tastes very good. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just realized this would be a great entrance point to Indian cooking if it was something you wanted to try, but maybe you were intimidated because there are so many spices. This is really easy to make. Uh-huh. Well, that'll do it. That was really good. Yum. My name is Donna and I live in Singapore. A common dish eaten in Singapore when you're sick is congee with um, century egg and meatballs or stranded meat. The base is a savoury rice porridge which is essentially rice slow cooked in broth or stock and then it's topped with uh, different types of toppings but a very common combination is diced century egg with meatballs or shredded meat. Uh, my family also adds a lot of ginger to it as well. So I also want to add something about century egg that I've seen in like mainstream media. It's sometimes portrayed as something quite scary or weird. Uh, but a lot of cultures around the world have different kind of fermented foods and I just want to add that century egg is just one of them as well. So the dish originated from the ethnic Chinese community and it wasn't originally a dish for you eat when you're sick. You eat it um, because at the time people were quite poor so they're trying to stretch out whatever food that they had at the time. It is warm and light and easy to eat and to be honest it's quite bland so that's why the toppings make a lot of difference and add flavour to the dish. So like century egg adds kind of like creamy funkiness whereas the, the meatballs or the meat makes it more savoury as well. It's a very comforting dish and it also feels quite nutritious um, and to be honest when you're sick you just want something that's light and easy to eat anyway. My mother makes it for me even today. Okay, I have kanji with homemade pork meatballs and the century egg. I have never had a century egg before. And you know, it's uh, I'm gonna start with the kanji. Oh, it's just off the stove, it's hot. Mm. Ooh, that's good. I love savory porridge. Honestly, like, I feel like in America, it's always like apples and cinnamon, peaches and cream. Like, where is the savory? This is my jam. Okay, we're gonna go for the century egg. I didn't, I don't taste anything. Okay, you know what? We're gonna go in for this middle piece here where the yolk is. That's gonna have a flavor. There's so much happening. That is a busy, busy flavor palette. Whoa. The yolk is where all the flavor is. It has this kind of cheesy, creamy texture that is Maybe like a maybe like a camembert cheese or something a little pungent, but not like as big as a blue cheese somewhere in the middle there. I love stinky cheeses, so this is actually up my alley. Who would have thought it? I think that this is obviously a flavor palette that people grow up with, and it might not be the easiest to enter into at a later point in life, but if you're somebody who is more 
of an adventurous eater, I think that this is definitely something worth trying and worth experimenting because it's good. Ooh, damn. I was trying to have that nice little like last moment where you like eat it, but then it kind of spilled. My name is Pollyanna and I live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Here in Brazil, it really depends sort of on what part of the country you're from when it comes to having some sort of sick food, but it's usually some sort of soup. I actually thought of one of the soups that's in a cookbook that I'm writing that's about Brazilian foods and foods from different parts of the country. This is a soup that's called caldo de ovos. It's a egg soup from the state of Maranhão, which is in the Northeast. This is a sort of soup that you'll actually find in any little bar in the capital city of São Luís. Um, it's been said to also be good for hangovers, so I guess it's also good for that kind of sick. It has a lot of the ingredients that you would assume that a sick food sort of has, right? At least for, for me. So like there's the egg that I'm used to um, from my, my own upbringing. This has cassava flour. So at the very end of the preparation for the soup, you pour in some cassava flour to thicken it a little bit. It has a little bit of acidity with lime and tomato and cassava flour will give it that sustenance that you need when you don't feel like getting out of bed. Okay, I have the beef and egg soup from Brazil and honestly, my kitchen smells so good. It kind of smells like chili. Oh my, oh my God. This is so good. It tastes like, honestly, it tastes like like tangy chili. I have a yolk. I... Oh, it's like springy, huh, that's cool. So I was supposed to use cassava flour. I could not find it. I was texting with Polly. She said that cornmeal was an okay substitute, so that's what I've used. It thickens it in an essence, it like makes it like, like that. Is that a description? Fun fact, I actually know Pollyanna from high school. We were friends. So I reached out to her because I know that she was making a cookbook and I asked if she would submit a recipe from Brazil for it. And you know, hi. <laughs> That was amazing. Rec I recommend this. Hi, my name is Jana, and I come from the city of Kimli in Armenia. If you ever feel like you're coming down with a cold and you are in Armenia, you're more than likely to be recommended a dish that is called sabas or tanapur. It's a light creamy soup that is made of plain yogurt, some pearl barley, chicken stock, butter, onions, as well as some fresh herbs like parsley or mint. Uh, there is certain creaminess and tartness that comes from the plain yogurt, as well as some freshness that comes from the herbs. Overall, it's a very filling and satisfying dish. It is very nurturing and comforting, and because there is really nothing heavy in its ingredients, you are more than likely to feel better after you eat it, and it helps you restore your system. When I feel sick, my mom usually makes me apur. Uh, there is something typically Armenian about this dish, about tanapur. So that is why I think, and majority of Armenian people think, that apur is such a beloved part of our cuisine and overall the Armenian experience. So the final dish that we're trying is a yogurt-based soup called tan apur from Armenia. Ooh, it's very refreshing, actually, for a yogurt soup. I like it. I wasn't sure, I just, in general, I'm somebody who really loves a lot of spice, a lot of flavor, and of course, you know, going into a sick foods episode, <laughs> that's not the game here. But I thought that this might be bland, but it's actually not bland, because the yogurt and the mint are honestly carrying it. 
This episode has been so interesting for me and I honestly feel like I've learned so much because I had this expectation before this even started that I thought everybody had like chicken broth or a vegetable broth when you were sick. I didn't really think that this was something that changed that much from country to country. And obviously, number one, I was very, very wrong. But number two, seeing all of these different dishes and their main ingredients has taught me actually a lot more about the world at the same time. And I love that you guys are making these videos with me and that we can share our cultures with one another. And I also just wanna say that I appreciate so much how positive the comments are, that you guys are all just so open and interested to learn from one another. It just feels like a little slice of niceness in the pile that is the world right now. You know what I mean? So I wanna say thank you. And with that, I'm going to finish my soup and I will see you all in the next video.